Now joined by Craig Forrest to break down what was a very busy first Saturday at the FIFA World Cup. Uh, Craig, let's start with Argentina. Unable to beat Iceland, a real surprise to a lot of people, but this tiny nation continues to surprise and impress on the world stage. Lionel Messi missing a big chance from the spot, of course. That's the big talking point, but this has become a talking point with him. He's missed four of the last seven of his penalty kick attempts for both club and country. Following the match, Argentina's goal scorer in Manchester City, Sergio Aguero, said this about Messi. Leo showed that he's human. We support him. He just had a bad day, but we know that he can give us the victory at any moment of the game. I hope he can be better for the next match against Croatia. When you look at Lionel Messi, Craig, how much blame can you put on him for not getting three points here? Well, you expect so much from him. We just you know, He has set the standards so incredibly high for himself that you expect when you have 11 attempts at net that he's going to score two or three. He does it all the time. For club and country, I mean, he's a 50-goal-year goal scorer. He's one of the very best of all time. And I think what makes it worse, matters worse, is that Ronaldo in his last game scores from three or four attempts, and he scores his penalty. And there's a lot of comparisons, obviously, between the two. However, when you look at even deeper, a couple years ago, Ronaldo played against Iceland, and he had 10 attempts a goal, one on target, didn't score himself. So this Icelandic team is no surprise. They've done it before. They've been there. They weren't even celebrating after the game because they knew and expect themselves to get these results. It's not a pretty style of football, don't get me wrong, but it's effective, and, uh, and they got the job done uh, if they needed a little bit of luck as well. Iceland, they know how to play against the world's best. Their dentist doctor doesn't even get excited uh, on the, on the touchline, but right. what a team to watch. Staying in Group D, shall we? Croatia defeating Nigeria 2-0. The Croatians view in this as potentially their most important group stage, stage match, that is, uh, and it showed by their performance. It did, you know. I mean, I thought they managed the game really well. It wasn't a terrific, brilliant game of football, I didn't think. The Nigerians, they huffed and puffed. The energy was there. The pace of the game was pretty frenetic at early, early parts of the game. But overall, I think, like I said, the managing of the game was great for Croatia. It's always a tough game, and they talked about this openly and publicly, that this game was as important as any in the, in the uh, group stage. So they needed to get the job done. They did. Nigerians, don't know where the goals are going to come from and defensively okay they could probably look back on the match and say well it was an own goal and a penalty decision uh, that cost us the game but they need to be much better if they're going to get out of the group mm. they wore the wrong kits that's really what it was they got to wear the, the shirt that everybody's talking about switching now to group c france there two one win over australia bit of history in this one is var uh, used for the very first time to reverse a decision in a world cup match what's your take on var as a whole you know, I think so far, we're so many games in, eight games, I believe, into the World Cup. I think it's been used pretty well, all in all. There's been a lot of kinks in other leagues and with the process of where they go with this VAR. But I would have to say that, you know, most of the decisions they're going to get, some of them are going to be 70%. People are going to say it's a, the right decision. You're always going to get a percent. They're going to say no. For the most part, let's hope that they get the ones mostly right. And I think that they will. So I think all in all, they've been pretty happy the way they've used it. And the referees have done a pretty good job dealing with it, I think. VAR going to play a, a real factor throughout the month in Russia. Oh, yes. On Friday, Yusuf Polson celebrated his 24th birthday. Then on Saturday, he scored the lone marker as Denmark, picking up a big three points by defeating a rather unlucky Peru side 1-0. Mm -hmm. They probably deserved more in that game than South Americans. They oh, were sure in it. They, they were good. I, I was impressed. And at least they can lift their heads high and certainly look into the rest of the tournament and say, well, we performed well enough that they deserved at least a point. Probably should have even picked up three points. They were that good. But you don't always get what you deserve in football. And in the end, Denmark do a good job. They get the goal that they need. And remember, they have Ericsson in midfield. They have a strong defensive core as well with Schmeichel in goal. You know, he was part of the team of Leicester that were 5,001 and won the league. I don't think Denmark's ever been close to that. So they have to feel as though they have a chance if they can defend like that and get a little bit lucky from time to time. So the first four match day of the tournament sees France, Denmark, and Croatia with wins. Well, Argentina have to settle for quite a surprising 1-1 draw. Craig Forrest, thanks so much for stopping by. Pleasure.